touch this. You can't touch this. Break it down. This episode of Talking Footy. I'm your host Sean, and with me again, just before I introduce him, I'll read out a couple of quotes here. Uh, charming, a uh, charming intellectual, informative and witty, and a damn good looking fellow. None of these are written about my main Dan. Uh, thanks, I guess. Well, <laughs> there was some good footy played over the weekend. Uh, it all started with the Bulldogs who came from Brisbane in a tough Friday night game, surely it was. Uh, the Tigers finally get a win on the board against an uh, underwhelming Cowboys outfit, that's for sure. Uh, Penrith became the first team in 50 years to keep the Dragons to nil at Coggera. Yeah, well, the Steelers would have actually put a point on. Too bad the Dragons turned up. <laughs> Merely got back in the win winner's circle against a uh, resilient Raiders side. Yeah. yeah. That was a shame there. The Storm beat the Roosters in a thrilling top-of-the-table clash. Uh, the Gold Coast hammered Para in Mudgee. Yeah. Yeah. The Warriors bounced back to beat the Knights across the ditch. And finally, Cronulla upset South in a close encounter on Monday night. Yeah, definitely, mate. There was some fire in a few of those matches. Uh, it was good to see Dane Tilts and Andy Watmo shaking hands after the fight. Yeah. Um, yeah, only moments earlier, they were throwing their hands at each other. <laughs> no, mate, nothing wrong with some uh, good old-fashioned fisticuffs there. Uh, the Origin squads have been named, and there are no real surprises. Uh, by Andrew Fafita in ahead of Tim Grant, Aaron Woods and Tim Manor, but you can't pick them all. Yep. Yeah. Um, you regular viewers out there know our feelings in regards to super utility Kirk Gibbon. All I want to say is that in this day and age, there are only two great myths in the world. Number one is the Loch Ness Monster. And number two is that Kirk Gibbon actually managed to do anything in an origin team. <laughs> but, uh, you know, enough about that. Thankfully, he has been ruled un. Fit, obviously not thankful for him, but for the rest of the state and our chance of victory, thankfully. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he won't be stuffing us from within. Um, and for those of you keeping score, remember last week when I said that uh, Nathan Merritt's missed tackle on Marika Corabetti would cost him his origin spot? Mm -hmm. Who's laughing now? Yeah, well, well, this guy. <laughs> well, those idiots out there uh, want to pull the race card. Blake Ferguson is uh, Merritt's teammate in the Indigenous, indigenous team, and uh, yeah, he's, he's solidified his spots out there. So, yeah. uh, but that's enough about State of Origin for the moment, because we've got an Origin special next week. Mm. So, Shauna. Well, I'm looking forward to that special. Right. So, uh, let's get to this popular part of the segment. Who's shit house and who's shit hot? Well, mate, I'll start off with shit house, and it has got to be the Dragons we touched on earlier there. Cannot score a point at home. I mean, mm. uh, Penrith playing well at the moment, but uh, to be held as yeah. Blotto. At, uh, at Congra there, first time in 50 years, yeah. uh, it's got to be called shit house. Fair yeah. enough, yeah. Now, no arguments on this no. side. Now shit hot, I, uh, we did touch on it earlier again too, is uh, Andrew Fafita, yeah. who barnstormed all his way into the origin team. In the last maybe three or four games, he's just been having an absolute ripper. Even in an underwhelming Sharks yeah. side, uh, although they have been playing better lately, <laughs> Fafita's been an absolute standout and deserves his spot in the origin squad on mine. Yeah. He's actually cracked 200 metres, I think, five games in a row. Yeah, like, he's ripping it up. Yeah, fair enough. The Tigers are uh, sad to lose him, yeah. along with all the other Tigers talent that's now the Sharks, but <laughs> definitely for Fido. So, what do you got, mate? Mate, shit, how's this week is the Newcastle Knights. Now, I swear these blokes get worse homesickness than Steve Harmison. Uh, in the Hunter, they play a great brand of football, but as soon as they hit the road, mm, they shut up shop. And play some ridiculous football. Yeah. Uh, and more often than not, they come to spanking. Yep. You know, I don't care what kind of super coach you have. To be a premiership contender, you need to win everywhere, or you're just eating cricket team. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's... <laughs> what are they going to do when the grand finals play to Telstra? Uh, whoops. Oh, yeah. Copper driving 50-0. Yeah. yeah, that'll be good to watch. Well, the new cars. It should have been... You, you, you yeah. mate, next time we play the grand final, we'll be the hunter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyhow... Now, I don't care how biased this sounds. I actually did have written down here that I wanted uh, Penrith to be in my shit hot. And for good cause, as we all know, they're playing quite well. Um, but I'm actually going to go a uh, off a little bit but on the same lines. Uh, Tim Grant, definitely in my shit hot form for this week. Yeah. Uh, for this week, for this year so far. He started off a little slow. Um, Ivan Cleary gave him a bit of a kick up the bum by putting him back to the bench to try and rotate things around. Mm -hmm. Didn't quite work. Next week is in... The 
straight away into the starting team. He plays the first 60 minutes mm. every time in front row. He's making an unbelievable amount of tackles, missing extremely few, mm. and his work rate's great, and he's very, very unlucky not to make the Origin team. Um, Without you know, the feet of barnstorming, you probably would have. Exactly. Yeah. It's a, it would have been a coin toss. Very unlucky not to replace um, on the bench as well mm. with the injured Kirk Gilly, but... Mate, yeah, I have a good feeling that uh, Paul Gallon will probably go back to the back row sometime during this series and Tim Grant probably going to get another call up. For sure. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Well, uh, mate, did you see over the weekend that uh, David Williams and Brett Stewart were uh, allowed to sell their t-shirts at Brookvale even though it's not official merchandise? Mm, no, that was ridiculous. Mm. And after we got in trouble for trying to uh, sell a bootleg DVD <laughs> bootlegs at Paris Stadium, we have a right to be pissed off. Damn right. Yes. Apparently, to be allowed exemption, the profits need to go to charity. Uh, ah. Turns out, uh, beer money is not a registered charity. Who knew? <laughs> it's all politics, really. It's all politics. <laughs> well, see, I haven't tried to argue my case. That I was a charity case. Yeah, well, that uh, was a pair of us. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, that didn't hold up either. Now, as a part of the show where we rip off Doctor Who mm. and go back in time in... Reminiscing. Mm. Dan, remember Robbie Ross? Do I? Absolutely, mate. Uh, if his knee held up, Billy Slater would uh, still be a track work jockey in North Queensland. Mm. No doubt. Uh, this bloke was that good. He's the only bloke ever to be selected ahead of a fully fit Darren Lockyer to be in the Australian side. That's a fact. That's a, that's a hard cold that's, fact. That's no one has ever done that before. And uh, I believe we have some footage of his many great tries. Have right. we? One of many. Good luck. Gurdler's making a great run, support coming on his inside, Robbie Ross is away, Robbie Ross is going to make it, Robbie Ross is over, New South Wales are in, first set of six, an amazing start for the Blues, they have gone right around Queensland, and a sensational try, Gurdler breaking into space off a daily special, and then it was Robbie Ross, I feel, who's come in wide in the back line. He was an amazing player for Newcastle, uh, Brisbane, mm. uh, the Hunter Mariners, and Melbourne. But in fact, found out that um, during '95, when Robbie Ross was the Queensland fullback, he had to move to the wing to accommodate Robbie Ross. Yeah. And the only reason he moved to Brisbane was because he'd signed a Super League contract and he couldn't play for an ARL club in '96. Sure. But um, yeah, even Slater admits today that if uh, if it wasn't for Ross showing him the ropes, he doesn't know where he'd be today. Sure. Well, probably pissing people off somewhere else. <laughs> Moving on, uh, so as mentioned before, uh, Pirates with the home game, Jim Mudgee and it's much fanfare, and that brings us to our hot topic. <laughs> Go on. Mate, it does. Um, congratulations to the Eels uh, for going to the country New South Wales and spreading the great rugby league gospel. For sure. Mudgee is a rugby league heartland. Uh, I went to the City Country game last year, and the atmosphere at the ground was great. It was fantastic. The crowd was good, the, the amenities, everything. It was fantastic. Yep. Um, I dare to say that it would have been the same when Melbourne played Canterbury Mackay last year too. Ben Barber lit, yep. lit up the game yep. as well, the whole team. Great, great stuff. Um, if the ARL, ARL Commission is serious about helping the game at the grassroots, they need to take, or they need to give the clubs an incentive to move a vital home game to country areas. Mm. Clubs take a massive financial hit when they move a home game from yeah. there, obviously due to gate takings and things like that. So the commission needs to compensate the clubs with all that money from a much louder TV billion yeah. dollar deal. Yeah, we need the TV monies. The wife keeps yeah. telling me about the TV monies. <laughs> when will you get the TV monies? <laughs> need some of that damn TV money. Uh, look, Parks, Dubbo, Wagga, um, Bathurst, Lismore, they're all areas screaming out some top class footy. Sure. Hey, there are just a few, just a, a minute amount of towns I've named in New South Wales. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many places that love more support. Mm -hmm. Country Rugby League is an integral part of our game, and it's about, about time they were, uh, they were showing some love. Yeah, too true, too mm -hmm. right. Well, maybe the stellar crowds uh, outselling some of the club's home games at these, uh, mm -hmm. at these country games might uh, get the NRL to sit up and notice. Yeah. But we'll see. Yeah, although if I was Melbourne, I wouldn't take... Oh, not Melbourne, sorry. If I was Manly, I wouldn't take any game. No, away. no, 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 no. no. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, time for our tips of the week. Dan, what do you got for Mate, our factors? Uh, buy round this week. Only four games on, and I have got all home teams. All right. All, oh. all four home teams uh, getting up this week. And uh, that's my... Luck of the week. 
Oof. Big call. Yeah, yeah, Big nice. call. What do you reckon, mate? Mate, uh, if Josh Reynolds plays, which I haven't seen the news today, so I don't know if it is. He's been named. Oh, yeah! <laughs> well, there goes my Bulldogs. <laughs> it was a busy day for me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, uh, in that in mind, South Sydney. Mm-hmm. Adam Reynolds and John Sutton together. They might be missing a few players, as in... Uh, well, all the origin stars and Sam Burgess, but they are definitely mine. A shoe in of the week. That brings this episode to a close. Mm-hmm. This show is brought to you by the good blokes over at Joss Services for all your security needs mm-hmm. and the eBay store Phillips 79. Good stuff. Don't, yeah, don't forget they're actually having their autism awareness uh, auction on June the 15th. You can check the link on our page. Some great stuff on there. So, you know, money's going to a good cause and put something up on your wall. And don't forget to like our Facebook page and uh, go to www.talkingfooty.com for all your footballing needs. Yeah. All right. Have a good weekend and uh, see you next week. Cheers, guys. And that's the end of that chapter.